My name is Usha Tedro, and I am the director of the Clinical Cardiac Electrophysiology Fellowship at Brigham and Women's Hospital in Boston. I'm also the chair of the program director subcommittee of the Heart Rhythm Society, and we'll be speaking today a little bit on planning the future of electrophysiology, the trends and needs of women trainees. So I thought I'd just start with a little bit of an example that in electrophysiology, we are a very rapidly growing specialty. Um, atrial fibrillation as an example is something that increases in incidence with each decade of life. And as you can see on this slide, we're expecting the population to age and we're also expecting atrial fibrillation to increase in incidence. And there are going to need to be electrophysiologists to care for these patients. However, if we look over the past several years at how many electrophysiology doctors are entering the job market, the number has been declining. And that reason is not really uh, clear, um, but it is clear that only six to 10% of electrophysiologists nationally have been women over these years. And we're missing an opportunity potentially to have some of those women that are not selecting electrophysiology participate in the specialty as our needs are growing in the future. So where are the women? Uh, Pam Douglas did a really interesting study examining results for cardiology as a specialty, um, which may be applicable to electrophysiology. She was examining career preferences and perceptions of cardiology among applicants. They, she conducted a survey that was emailed to trainees and US program directors from 2009 to 2010. And interestingly, this uh, survey ended up including both men and women and actually more than half of the study participated were men. And they looked at an eight-factor model that involved um, reasons for selecting or not selecting cardiology as a specialty. And you can see here that the men and the women generally had a lot of the same concerns. They wanted stable hours. They wanted a family-friendly environment. They wanted positive role models. They wanted financial benefits. They wanted professional challenges, a patient-focused environment, and a stimulating career. However, the big difference between the men and the women was the perception that cardiology is not a female-friendly specialty. The other interesting thing that came out of that study was that if you looked at the, the women that did select cardiology as a specialty, it turned out that they had a really strong interest in the specialty from early on in their training. Let's examine now the percent of women in their first year of fellowship according to um, the, the career path that they've selected. So here on the top of this slide are all internal medicine uh, specialties. And you can see between 35 and 40% of all internal medicine uh, specialties are comprised of women in their first year of fellowship. Heart failure comes next, general cardiology is below that, and both interventional cardiology and electrophysiology are below that, um, and electrophysiology has bounced around a little bit. One piece of hopeful data that I'd like to show you is that for our last two match cycles in cardiac electrophysiology, we've had an increase in the number of women applicants, uh, up to 12% and 14.7%, which is really exciting. So what are the factors that are important to selection of electrophysiology as a specialty? Both for men and women, there's a perception that the training is too long and there are definitely efforts underway uh, to streamline training pathways for all cardiology fellowship trainees. Additionally, however, perhaps more important for women, there's this perception of electrophysiology that maybe needs to be changed. A lot of women receive advice regarding career choice um, potentially by well-intentioned advisors that may not be up to date on the latest advancements in electrophysiology. There are some factors in electrophysiology that actually make it quite friendly to women, um, such as the development of zero fluoro or low fluoro techniques. Um, and also there are realities about the potential flexibility of electively booked procedures that may uh, increase the likelihood that a woman could be flexible in her career in electrophysiology. 
So I would suggest a couple of very simple action items for anyone that's running an electrophysiology fellowship that wants to increase the number of women in their training program and how we should maybe train for the future in electrophysiology. I think the most important thing is early mentorship. Fellowship applicants in electrophysiology, whether male or female, um, underrepresented minority or non-URM, have in common that early on, usually in medical school, they've met an influential figure in EP that strongly affected their desire to choose the specialty. The other thing that we can do is is make a track record of persistent support of our women and URMs after training. Representation in leadership, in committees and journal editorial boards, conference speakers, and capitalizing on both prominent male as well as female champions of these trainees. Thank you very much for your attention.